So we discuss a few more uh, properties about associated primes uh, in this lecture. So here is a proposition. Let R be Noetherian and M finitely generated, then the set of zero devices on M is the union of the associated primes. Primes of M. What does I mean? What are we saying? So, what is a zero divisor? So, uh, R in R is a zero divisor. So, this is zero divisor on M. If there exists an X not equal to zero inside M, such that R X is zero. Okay. So, what we want to show is that every such r belongs to an associated prime to some associated prime and conversely every element of an associated prime is a zero divisor so, okay so proof proof of proposition okay so let p be associated to m this implies that there exists x in m such that annihilator of x is equal to p okay. and if annihilator of an element is a proper ideal then it must be a non-zero x okay. so this implies that this implies that every element of p p is a zero divisor okay therefore the union of p union over p where p runs over the set of associated primes is uh, the, the consist of zero devices and nothing else okay so now uh, conversely let r in r be a zero divisor okay. let x not equal to zero inside m be such that rx is zero so now consider the set annihilator of x in R. Okay. So now this is an element. Okay. So among okay. so Mac elements elements maximal among annihilators of arbitrary y y in M. are in I mean are associated to M they are in they are in that set as M okay so now consider let lambda be the set of all things of this form okay. y is non zero and y contains this this ideal this This is non-empty because this annihilator of x itself is inside here. R is Noetherian, so lambda has a maximal element. Uh, yeah, uh, lambda is non-empty, so lambda has a maximal element, which uh, means that uh, annihilator of, uh, of R of x is inside P for some associated prime. Associated prime P. Because the maximal L, so this is a collection of ideals. Uh, clearly with y equals x, one can get, that, that belongs to the set, so this is non-empty. 
and therefore maximal among them uh, maxima among ideals of this form uh, they are associated and they will be inside uh, inside p okay. so now actually we can make this a little bit uh, stronger so this is about annihilator of a single so what did this argument say using netherian uh, netherian uh, uh, condition that annihilator of an element is inside some associated prime we can actually prove a slightly stronger statement which is that if i is an ideal that consists of zero divisors then i is in some associated prime okay. i mean it, it will have to use this proposition and one more proposition called prime avoidance lemma okay so uh, here is a this uh, it's a statement about arbitrary rings okay. let p1 through pn be prime ideals Let I be an ideal such that I is in the union of the PI. Okay. I is in the union. So the union itself is not an ideal uh, or may not be an ideal. So I is inside here. Then I is inside PI for some I. And this is not the most general version of this lemma. This, uh, this lemma, uh, one can relax these conditions. So I will put them as uh, I will put them as exercises. But uh, this is the version that we would need to use. Okay, so we will just. Okay, so why is it called prime avoidance? It says that if I uh, prime avoidance is usually the contrapositive statement which is that if i avoids each of the pi i is not a subset of each of the pi then i is not a subset of the union okay. so that that's some ways sometimes that's how it's used okay. so this is that's why it's called prime avoidance lemma so proof okay. so i is contained in the union of n primes and we want to show that i is none of them so we can assume that, so we will proceed by induction. Induction on n. Okay. And we can assume that i is not contained, if n is 1 there is nothing to prove. Okay. So if n is equal to 2 is what we have to check. And uh, so, okay. so what do we, uh, so we assume by induction. that i is not contained in a union of fewer than n elements in p1 through pn. Because if that were the case, then by induction we would know this. So we can assume that it is not contained in any. So what happens when n is equal to 2? Okay. So what is the hypothesis? The hypothesis is that i is uh, uh, i is contained in the union of uh, is in p1 union p2, and we want to show that i is in p1 or i is in p2. Okay. So since i is not contained in the union of n minus 1 things here. Uh, before we start, we can even set up that notation. Okay. Pick xi in i, but not in the union of pj, j different from i. Okay. So since i is not contained in the union, uh, we can pick such xi. Okay. Now, what does it mean when n is 2? Okay. So, xi x1 is inside i, but not 
in the union of things that are that is different from i so it is in p it, it's in i but not in p2 x2 is inside i but not in p1 i is contained inside p1 union p2 So what about x1 plus x2? Okay, uh, sorry, before we go into x1 plus x2, what does this say now? Uh, x1 is inside i but not in p2, Therefore, and it is inside p1 union p2. So now this one says x1 is inside p1, x2 is inside p2. Okay. Okay. Uh, suppose x1 plus x2 is inside p1. Okay. So x is inside p1. Uh, x is in, so uh, we have to show. Let's, yeah. Uh, so suppose uh, here look, uh, x1 is inside uh, i1 uh, inside i but not in p2 it is inside p1 so x1 uh, suppose x1 plus x2 is inside p1 so putting these two conditions we would get that x2 is inside p1 which is a contradiction therefore x1 plus x2 is not uh, inside p1 okay similarly x1 plus x2 is not inside p2 okay so uh, what is the conclusion the conclusion is that if i is not inside p1 and p2 i is not in the union okay, so x1 plus x2 is not inside p1 union p2 okay so this is uh, this is inside i okay, so this is the conclusion and one observation that we would like to make at this point is that which is not relevant for this proof but it is relevant for an exercise is that we did not use the fact that p is a prime here that p i is prime okay so the first two ideals in that list p1 and p2 need not be prime ideals that okay so that's the uh, observation that we take from this which is relevant for the one of the exercises okay so now assume n is greater than greater than or equal to 3 uh, so then we consider the element. So we have picked elements x1 through xn uh, satisfying this and consider the element x1 plus x2. So x2 plus x times x3 and so on up to xn. So this element, uh, this is inside uh, p1 union pn. That was the hypothesis. This is an element of i. Okay. Uh, so if you assume that since x is not in, in p2 union pn, if i is not in p2 union pn, uh, we will get that. So i2 we can assume that's by induction is not a subset of p2 union pn. Okay. And uh, uh, from this uh, we will get uh, so x2 See, x2 is not inside the x2 is inside i but in not in the union of every element which is different from uh, j different from 2 okay so okay so then okay so from this therefore arguing that 
one gets uh, that x2 uh, x1 is inside p1 okay and from uh, uh, which is a contradiction because we started off by saying uh, pick uh, pick an x1 that's inside uh, that's inside uh, uh, i but not in the uni uh, sorry, uh, sorry, not x1, I apologize. This will prove that x2 through x3 up to xn minus 1, xn is inside p1. Okay. So, these elements were picked inside, uh, uh, inside I, I, but avoiding everything other than second, then av avoiding everything other than third and so on. So, these elements are not inside p1 but the product is inside p1 but p1 is a prime which is a prime okay so note that xi is not inside p p1 for all i different from 1 okay so this is a contradiction so that's the that's the proof of this prime avoidance lemma and uh, using these things, we can get the following corollary, R Noetherian, I, an ideal of zero devices, okay. not necessarily killing the same x inside m, okay. zero devices on m, uh, m is finitely generated. Okay. It does not mean I is the I is a subset of the annihilator of some element, it could be annihilators of various elements, okay. then there exists an x not equal to 0 in m such that i x 0. We are not assuming that, it just says that for every element inside i, every element r inside i, there is an x such that r x is 0, that is all that we are assuming here. But we are saying we are switching the order of the quantifiers here. There exists a zero. Uh, there exists an x such that R x is zero for every year. Okay. So the proof is just using prime avoidance. Uh, notice that I is in the union. I is in the union of P P associated to M. This is a finite set. So this now implies that p is inside this is prime avoidance i'm oh, sorry i is subset of p for some p p in associated to m but p itself is annihilator of some element so i annihilates the same element okay so that's the end of this uh, this uh, uh, Prop uh, statement. Okay, so another useful proposition in these um, uh, in this uh, topic is the following. Let's say R is an not R an Ethereum M finitely generated. Then there exists uh, a filtration zero, which we start at 0, m1, and it, I mean an increasing filtration like this. Of course, R is an Ethereum, these are sub, okay, these are sub modules of m, so this is not going to go very far, it is going to stabilize somewhere, but we can actually do this, uh, we can get such a filtration uh, and this is some mr equals m such that uh, mi mod mi minus 1 is isomorphic to r mod p i for some i. Okay. So, at successive stages the quotients are r mod i, r mod p. Okay. Proof. Okay. So, what, what is the first module? The first module is just m 1 mod m 0 which is just m 1 and that is r mod p i, uh, we are saying that that should look like r mod p i, r mod p 1. So, 
in other words we are saying that there is a uh, 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 there is a cyclic quotient module a cyclic module uh, quotient by a prime ideal that sits inside m and we know one place to look for such a thing which is an associated prime okay so let p1 be an associated prime prime and m1 equal, uh, equals uh, so okay. then r mod p1 injects into m call its image Uh, m1 okay now we go modulo m1 and construct an m2 now go modulo now do the same thing do the same in m mod m1 and get an m2 such that I mean M2 will I mean we will get some module here with the same argument look at its pre-image pre such that M1 is inside M2 and is inside M. Okay. And we can repeat this okay, repeat this to get a sequence M1 M2 this must stabilize but the only place it can stabilize is at m because if it stabilizes elsewhere just go modulo that and do the same argument okay so do this and this stabilizes exactly i mean at m it cannot stabilize stabilize strictly inside m because then you go modulo that stable value and then repeat the argument and then you would have constructed one So this is, uh, and often uh, such as because this gives us sort of a inductive handle to answer many questions about modules by just looking at uh, quotients by uh, prime ideals. Okay, and we know that I mean, in some sense, these are this this might be easier to handle than arbitrary modules. Okay, so this is an, some proposition that will get used sometime later. Okay, so before, uh, so I conclude this lecture with two examples. Uh, one, uh, sorry, one example. This, the other one we already worked out, which was x squared comma x y. So this is a, an example. Ah, let's do x square. So now example one. Uh, so R is k x y and i is x square x y. We would like to determine its minimal and embedded components. Okay. So then we know that radical of i is x. So min of r mod i is the singleton x. Okay. And then we also saw that uh, this ideal is associated to R mod I. We, we knew the irredu irreducible and primary decomposition. So, okay. But how, how, where does the, uh, uh, how do we get the uh, uh, uniqueness? So we just found one. How do we know that it's unique? So how, how do we ha do that argument? So to find the component, the primary or irreducible component uh, component for x okay. we look at r localized at x okay. so we look at i r localized at x but localizing many elements outside x is not a very computationally convenient thing so one we could do is we could just first invert y and then worry about inverting other things. Okay. But if you just invert y, i, so y is outside x. So in the process of inverting every element outside x, one step would be to invert y. 
Okay, so now what is this? So the ideal contains x squared and xy. In the ring ry, y is a unit. So you, you don't need to put this unit. So xy and x will generate the same ideal after y is inverted. And once x is there, so maybe we can write this x squared xy extended to ry. So I said this is, this is unnecessary now in this ring. It's not going to change the ideal. So this is the same as, uh, so this, so what I meant is this is a unit, unit now in that ring. Okay. So this is the same as x squared x ry. And of course, if x is there, then you don't need x squared. So this is x ry. Okay. So therefore, i ry contracted to r is just x. Okay. So that is why the minimal component corresponding to this, remember this was just x intersect x squared y. So one can determine minimal components like this. Uh, this is this is a way to find them. Okay. We'll do one more example, which is a little bit more complicated. Okay. So R is the ring uh, in four variables, u, v, x, y, and I is the ideal generated by u x v y and u y plus v x. Okay. So there are two sets of variable and then we are taking all four products but except in the third term we are taking the sum. I mean we are taking two products separately and then taking the sum. Okay. So this is then we would like to know what this is. So first we would like to understand the support of m, support of r mod i. So, P contains I implies Ux, U is in I, U is in P or X is in P and so this is from the first term and V is in P or Y is in P, just the first term. Okay, so suppose u is not there in p. Okay, so first of all, there are now uh, u comma v is a possibility. Okay, so we can write u comma. We can just explicitly check, enumerate them. U comma v. This term is there. This term is there, and this term is there. Similarly, x comma y are both in support of our mod i. Okay, so this is there. Okay. Now uh, we can ask, suppose u is not there, okay. suppose u is not there in p, p is some prime ideal, this is some prime ideal. Okay. If u is not there, then x must be there and if x is there, then this ter ter term is there. So, this implies that x is inside p. If x is inside p, then vx is inside p. This implies that uy is inside p. So what is what I'm saying here? x is inside p means that the second term here vx is inside p, which means that the first term is also inside p, but u is not there, so y is inside p. Okay. So in other words, x comma y uh, is subset of p. Okay, similarly, okay, uh, similarly do for v not inside p, x not inside p, y not inside p. Okay, so the conclusion of all of this argument is that the minimal primes in the support of R mod i is just two things: u comma v and x comma y. Now, we can ask what are the other other associated primes and if there are, uh, what are they? So let's first evaluate the primary components corresponding to these primes. So what 
is the primary component. So we don't need to know the entire associated prime to determine the primary components for minimal primes. That is one advantage of that theorem. Primary component for u comma v. I mean, primary component of i for u comma v. Well, we just localize it. So this is i r localized at u comma v and then we want to contract it back to r. But again localizing it, this is not that easy to, I mean we don't even, it is not easy to describe that ring. But we could just start by inverting x and y first. Okay. So then, okay, so this is the same as, okay, so, okay. so this is inverting everything outside u, the ideal generated by u and v. So when, in, when we invert just x and y, we already get u and v. If we invert x, then as we argued in the previous uh, example, this becomes a unit and then we just need to put in u. Similarly, y becomes a unit, so we just need to put in v. And once u and v are there, all the terms are there. So then we can just conclude that this is uv. Okay? And similarly, i r x y intersect r is x y. So these two are two primary components. Now we check is i equal to u v intersect x y. Is this all the components that we have to worry about? So the answer is no, because the right hand side is u x v y and u y plus v. Uh, sorry, u y comma v x. Okay. There are four terms here, while in i, it was just a sum. So that's a smaller ideal than this. Okay, so this is the right hand side is no, which means that there are other associated primes and we need to find them. Okay. So what are the other associated primes? Okay. So let q be an embedded prime, meaning a prime that's not minimal. Or we could just say let q be any prime. Let q be an associated prime. such that q does not contain u. So we are going to uh, do this. So which means that q, q r u is associated to r u mod i r u. Okay. But what is r u mod i r u? So we can, we will just invert u here. And if you invert u, we would get x. Okay. And if you invert x, then uh, uh, it just becomes v and uh, y. And uh, so if you invert u, then u gets killed. And then if you invert y, we will get killed. And uh, sorry, if you, sorry, uh, in, in r mod i. If you, if you invert u, then x gets killed and then, uh, so let us write this out. Okay. So r u is k adjoint u v x y and the inverse of u. Okay. I r u is u x v y u y plus v x okay. and so r u mod i r u this is k u v x y u inverse modulo use a unit so we just need x okay. and uh, and use a unit so we can remove this y plus v we can rewrite this as u inverse v x okay. and v y so what have i done 
the first element you don't need the u because it's a unit so the remaining things is needed only needed in the ideal in this one we use a unit so that i can multiply both sides by u inverse and get what rewrite this as y plus u inverse vx okay now in this ideal we have u v x y u inverse modulo there is x here and if x is there then one does not need this term this second term here because this is just a multiple of x so one just needs y and if one has x and y one does not need this i mean one has y one does not need this term so this is just this okay so in other words but this is a domain this has only one associated prime okay so this is a domain okay. this is just killing x and y here so it's just k u v u inverse that is a domain has only one associated prime which is this so in other words so this implies that uh, if q is an associated prime of r mod i such that u is not inside q then q is x comma y that's what this conclusion uh, this argument says okay so now we can uh, okay, so we can do this for the remaining other variables also okay, do this for the other variables do this for the other variables okay now what so the conclusion would be that uh, first of all there is an associated prime which is not minimal and it has to contain if it doesn't contain u it's all, it's a minimal prime similarly for v and x and y so the conclusion is that uh, associated primes of m minus the min of m is the singleton set which consists of all the variables okay. so let me just repeat what i how we got this if you have an associated prime that doesn't contain u then it must be this if you have the same argument to say if you have associated prime that doesn't contain v it must be this similarly if you omit x and y we will get u and v if you if you localize x and localize y we will get u and v however we know that there is an associated prime which is not minimal because the minimal components don't give i it's something bigger than i therefore there's only one solution to this this problem now that associated prime there is an associated prime which can, which has all the variables and this is the maximal ideal Okay. So therefore, associated primes is minimal primes plus this maximal ideal, minimal primes over i plus this maximal ideal. And now, how do we write a primary decomposition? Well, because this is a maximal ideal, we have we are uh, lucky. any ideal j such that radical of j is u v x x y is u v x y primary okay so now what do we do well we play a little trick which is that let j be equal to i plus u v x y to the k where k is very large okay so radical of j is so j is uh, u v x y primary and then check that i is indeed the components for the minimal primes which we already worked out and j 
and it's independent of that exponent k for whenever it's very sufficiently large. Okay, so this is so this is one example which sort of goes back and forth between various ideas that we learned and then uh, lets us compute. Uh, the, finally, there is a trick, but apart from this, this trick here, everything else some in, in one way or the other we have seen in earlier lectures. Okay, so this is the end of this lecture. Mm -hmm.